All right, now, first things first, what exactly is the Pascal's triangle? So I'm sure that we've kind of heard of this term before, but let's revise exactly what it is. Now, the Pascal's triangle is really just a sequence of numbers, but the only difference with that is, is that it starts off with two numbers, unlike normal sequences, right? So it's starting off with two numbers, one and one. And then to get the next few numbers, this is what we do. So the first number is always going to be one, and the last number is always going to be one. But the number in between them, we get from the addition of the previous numbers. So to get this number, we add one and one, and that gives us two. So this here has one, two, one. Let's find out the next series of numbers. So remember, always starts off with one, and it always ends with one. And to find the numbers in the middle, we add together one and two. So that should give us three, right? And add together two and one. So that should give us three as well. And now can you kind of see how it forms that triangle shape? And that's why we call it the Pascal's triangle. So using this method, you can see how we can kind of keep going forever. So it always starts off with one, and this number here, which would be one plus three, so it'll give us four. Three plus three will give us six. That'll give us four, and we'll end off with one as well, and so on. So as long as you know the basics for that, you can work out the Pascal's triangle. But you can also see how frustrating it's gonna be if you have, you wanna go to 20 or 50 or something. You'll be sitting in the exam drawing forever. So this is why I said it's quite limited because there's only a so many amount that you can do before, it's just not worth it. Why are we learning about the Pascal's triangle? Well, the Pascal's triangle can actually be used for expansion, all right? And I'm gonna show you how. So firstly, let's consider the first set of numbers in the Pascal's triangle. So that's one and one. And the Pascal's triangle are actually used as coefficients for expansion. So just remember, these are going to be coefficients. So this may be a bit confusing now, but I'll show you how it works. So to start off with, let's have a look at the expansion of a plus b to the power of one. So this is how we do it. We think about the fact that it's we start off with number zero and then we increase to one and two and so on. So just keep that in mind. Now, we have A and B here. A is always to the power of that index there. So if that index is one, it's A to the power of one. And B, or the second term, is always starting off to the power of zero. So it starts off with zero. Now, to go on to the next term, you subtract one from A's index and you add one to B's index. So this becomes A to the power of zero and this becomes B to the power of one like that. And whenever you see that B's index here is the same as that index there, you know you stop. As well as we can't keep going because these indices added together has to equal that one. So a couple of notes. The first thing is we always start off with zero there. A is to the index of the same as that. And you end when B's index is the same as that. And you can kind of see how because we're starting off with zero, we're gonna have two terms here. So when you have to the power of one, you get two terms. Just keep that in mind. Now let's go back to the Pascal's triangle and the coefficients. So how does this fit into here? Well, this one and one become the coefficients of this expansion. So one goes in front of the first term and that one goes in front of the second term, just like that. And all you need to do now is simplify. So that just becomes a times b to the power of zero just equals to one. And here you have a to the power of zero, which just equals to one times b. So you get a plus b as your expansion. All right, so this may kind of seem like an overcomplicated way to expand this, but this is just a method that we're trying to learn here. So let's remember, this is how we did it for a plus b to the power of one. Now let's have a look at the next line in Pascal's triangle. 
So remember, we start off with one and the next term we get from adding these numbers together. So that's going to be two, good, and then one again. So this is our second line. And this is used as a coefficient for expanding a plus b to the power of two there. We use the same method. So remember, a is going to be to the power of the same as that. So it'll be a to the power of two. And b, you always start off with b to the power of zero there. And now what do we do? Yeah, that's right. So just subtract one from that index and add one to that. So that becomes a to the power of one, b to the power of one. And again, subtract one from that, add one to that one there. So you get zero and two. And remember when b or the second term has the same index as that, we stop. As well as you see that if you do keep going, these indices won't add together to equal two, okay? So remember, these indices always, always has to add together to be the same as that index there. Now we use the coefficients on the Pascal's triangle. So it's really easy. The first number there is a coefficient for the first term. The second number is a coefficient for the second term. Third number is a coefficient for the third term. So super easy, just put it straight in there. And now simplify. So this just becomes a squared, yeah? Two times a times b. And that just becomes one, so you get b squared. And this, as we're familiar with, is indeed the expansion for that. Good, so this is for power of one and power of two. Let's have a look at the next line. So start off with one, this term is gonna be one plus two gives us three, two plus one gives us three as well, and then one there. This is a little trick that you can use. This diagonal that you see here, so kind of the second diagonal of the Pascal's triangle, tells you which line to use for your expansions. So if it's to the power of three, you know to use this line because you look for the three there. And if it's to the power of two, like before, look for that two there, so you know to use this line. And it's really, it's quite good when later on you get up to higher numbers. So if you see power of seven, don't need to count down all the way to seven. You can just see, yep, seven is the second number there. That's the line that I'm gonna use. Let's expand this now. So the first term is going to be, that's right, a to the power of three, b to the power of zero. Subtract one, add one. So that becomes two and one. And subtract one, add one, one, two. Then finally, subtract one from that becomes zero, add one becomes three. You can see we have power three on our second term, which is the same as that index there. So we know to stop. Now another, remember how I told you to remember when we did the first one, that when it was to the power of one, we had two terms because we started off with zero. And when we had to the power of two, we had three terms, once again, because we're starting off with that zero. And now you can see that when we have the power of three, we have one, two, three, four terms. Yeah, can you see how there's a pattern evolving? So how many terms do you think we would have for the power of four? Exactly, five. And for power of five, good, there'll be six terms. So there's all be one more term than the power there. And you can kind of see how the Pascal's triangle fits perfectly with that. Because for the power of three here, you can see there's four coefficients for four terms. Just as for the power of two, there's three coefficients for three terms. Yeah, can you see how there's that pattern? So let's just put in our coefficients. So remember how I said, really easy. First one goes there, that three goes to the second term three to the third term, one to the fourth term, super easy. And net, just simplify. That's a cubed, three a squared b, that becomes three a b squared, that just becomes one, so you get b to the power of three. And once you're fully simplified, that is gonna be the expansion of a plus b to the power of three. Let's go on and have a look at the fourth line here. So for this one, let's work out what the series is gonna be. So one plus three gives us four, right? Three plus three gives us six, good. Three plus one gives us four again, and that ends off with one. 
Now if we extend this diagonal, you can see that this is going to be for the power of four and there's one, two, three, four, five turns. Yeah, so it's following that pattern. All right, let's expand that. We know it's going to start off with a to the power of four, b to the power of zero, and then you'll become three, one, and this will become two, two. Next one will become, yep, good, one and three there. It's going to end with a to the power of zero, b to the power of four. So easy there. And now we put in coefficients. One, four, six, four, one. And now we simplify. So this just becomes a to the power of four, four times that, six times that, four times that, and finally, because that just becomes one, that's just b to the power of four. And this is going to be your expansion for a plus b to the power of four there. Yeah? Thank you.